Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault, and today I'm coming to you with a little story about something that happened to me, and more specifically, one of my favorite firearms in my collection. Yeah, my B&T GHM-9 went boom. And so I kind of wanted to document this. This was not the video I was planning on making, but I want to share all of this information with you guys because sometimes you guys can help me figure out things. I think I've diagnosed the problem. I'm going to tell you about the resolution to this, but in case you own a B&T firearm like this, I just wanted to document this. So in case you have an issue like this, you know what you need to be on the lookout for. So as you can tell from the title of the video, my GHM-9 went boom and yeah it's kind of sad because this one is one of my favorite fires but I do think I have a good resolution so let's talk about what I was actually doing at the range when this happened I was recently contacted by a company called KCI USA which I guess is an importer of these B&T compatible magazines and they had said hey we would like you to do a review of these magazines on your channel. So they sent me two of these, which are supposed to fit the B&T APC-9 series and the GHM-9 series and pretty much any other gun that is compatible with these magazines. And they sent me 100 rounds of ammunition. And the ammunition they sent me was PMC-115 grain. And so I took all this to the range. I was going to try these magazines out both on an APC-9 Pro and my GHM-9, and this is a Generation 1. And I was just going to put 15 rounds, I think, in the first magazine just to test for function. You know, I might be able to diagnose a problem with this pretty quick if it's not feeding or it's difficult to load or whatever. So I loaded 15 rounds in this magazine. It's like, okay, I'm going to start off with the GHM-9. And, well, just let me show you what happened. Wow. And so the magazine got off to a little bit of a rough start. We had some feeding issues, but nothing that I think would make the gun unsafe or unreliable. And then it started to run pretty good. And then it went boom. Now it didn't come across on camera as much as it did in real life, but it was a very different sound than what I was expecting. It blew the magazine right out of the gun. If you watched it, it just dropped right out of the gun. And you saw some parts come out this side of the firearm. It startled me. And so I stopped and when I opened the chamber, well, there was nothing loaded in the chamber. However, some parts came out and the parts that came out was this little pin right here and a spring and what looks like a detent. And then I figured out this was all part of the extractor system in the bolt. Now the extractor itself was blown off somewhere. I could not find it at the range at all. And the casing that came out of the firearm looked like this. Yeah, I have never seen a casing do something like this. Yeah, so it really surprised me. I'm glad that I'm okay, and, and it's a reason why you should always wear eye protection when shooting. And I'm just kind of showing this in case somebody has had something similar happen to them on another firearm and might be able to tell me what happened or can confirm what I believe happened. So I lost the extractor, and luckily, there's no other damage to the firearm except for a little mark on the upper receiver and it seems to have like a little burr on that receiver, which I think can probably be filed off. But without the extractor, the gun is now inoperable. So it was something that I was not expecting, especially from a gun like this. So obviously we had a catastrophic failure. So I think I've narrowed down the three possibilities of what happened. 
Two of them I think I have excluded, and the third one I think is what happened, but maybe, as I said, somebody else can confirm. So let's go over the possibilities of what happened. So the first possibility of what happened is I had a barrel obstruction. Some people mentioned that when I posted this on Instagram and as a story on my YouTube channel. However, I've looked down the bore. There doesn't seem to be any damage. The barrel is not bulged. When I inspected the upper receiver and took the firearm apart, I didn't have any excess lead or copper, nothing that said the projectile was destroyed. I have nothing in the gun that says it was a barrel obstruction and upon reviewing the video, Video, it does appear that a projectile did go down range. So luckily, I did not have a barrel obstruction, but if it did, you might get something like this where you would have all of that pressure coming back into the firearm and could blow out the case like that. But some people said if that was the case, the casing of the round would not have expanded and ripped like that. It would have remained in the chamber. So I think I have eliminated the barrel obstruction theory. The next theory is that the round itself was double charged or it was overpowered. And so when I contacted some people and posted on my YouTube channel, people that are reloaders said that's probably not what happened either. Mainly because these B&T guns are really robust. They are over designed. They can run plus P ammunition and probably plus P plus. They could take a very powerful charge. Now it might damage the gun a little bit, but I don't think I'm going to get that casing to rip like this. I'm pretty sure even if that case was filled to the brim with powder, this gun could have handled it. I don't think it would have exploded and simply knocked off the extractor. Is it a possibility? Yes. But I didn't have any other issues with any of the other rounds and I even checked them just to be sure. So I don't think this was a double charge like some people said. Now the third possibility is what I think actually happened. It was an out of battle battery detonation of the primer. So I have discovered something about this particular firearm that I had never realized before and I guess I thought I should never have to check just because it's something that you don't think about. For many guns they have a disconnector so when the bolt or the slide is a little bit out of battery the hammer or the striker will not enter the chamber because it's a little bit out of battery. It's a safety issue and I realized after working with it here on the table that if I charge the gun, and by the way, as I said, there's no other damage to this gun, nothing to the lower receiver, the upper receiver, or the bolt. Everything seems to be just fine. It was just the loss of that extractor and that one issue on the receiver. But when the hammer is back like it is now, I can actually pull the bolt back quite a bit. And when I pull the trigger, the hammer still drops. And that tells me that if the round would have been a little bit out of spec or it would not have fed from the magazine properly and it got kind of stuck halfway in the chamber, this gun still could have detonated and hit that primer and it could have gone off without the round in the chamber fully and the gun is out of battery. So you still would get the projectile going down range, but the casing itself was not supported. And that's what I think went boom. And when this casing turned into this, it essentially stripped that extractor right out of the bolt. Now, as I said, this is something that I really don't think to look for in firearms. Now, is this a safety issue? I don't think so because I think all the B&T guns are like this and many direct blowback guns are like this. This is one thing that I think HK figured out on their UMP line of firearms. In fact, when I did my UMP to USC conversion, you have to have this little safety mechanism on the lower receiver removed. Essentially, if you have a two position lower receiver, it has what kind of looks like an auto sear, but it's actually a safety. It prevents the hammer from falling unless the bolt is fully forward. A gun like this doesn't have it because the ATF won't let them have it because it's considered an auto sear. It's some type of mechanism that could alter the hammer or alter the firing mechanism when the bolt is manipulated. Because of this, this thing can fire out of battery and I had no idea. So I guess as long as you have quality ammunition, you're good to go. Now, could this have been caused by the magazine? 
it's a possibility maybe it was just getting stuck coming off these feed lips, but I didn't have any other issues besides that one round. Now, granted, I only shot about, what, 10 or 15 rounds before this thing happened, but I don't think you can blame a magazine for an out-of-battery detonation of the primer. So I think that's what happened. And it kind of concerns me a little bit. I don't know if this thing is supposed to not be able to fire with the bolt back a little bit. I did try my other B&Ts. They work exactly the same way. And this is just one of those downsides to direct blowback. Do I still think B&T makes a quality product? Well, absolutely. I've never heard of anyone else having this exact issue. But if you have, let me know. And what exactly happened to you? Was it a particular brand of ammunition? Were you trying out maybe an aftermarket magazine? Did you change something about the gun when this happened? So that's what I think happened. I did contact B&T and they're going to take a look at it. So let's talk about the resolution. And so I emailed B&T. I sent them some pictures and told them exactly what happened. And they were pretty happy to say, hey, send the gun in and we're definitely going to take a look at it. We can definitely fix that extractor issue. While it's into the shop, I'm actually going to have them upgrade this because this is the generation one that doesn't run hollow points at all. And they're able to manipulate those feed ramps a little bit to allow them to like on the generation two and all the modern GHM nine. So I'm probably going to have them do that as well and take a look at this little piece on the receiver and see if they can file that down where that extractor or that casing kind of damaged it. But they're going to take it in on warranty work, which is really good. And I was really happy with how fast they got that. Back to me. So I guess I'll make a video when I get this back from them. I don't know how long it will take. The last time I had to send a gun into them for repair, it only took them about a week to a week and a half. And right now, as I'm filming this, they just got over a hurricane in Florida and BNT USA is based in Tampa. So I'm thinking they're going to be down for about a week or so. So hopefully they'll get the ticket out to me. I'll be able to mail this thing off and we'll get some type of resolution. But until then, I'm just curious. If you guys own a BNT or any other type of direct or straight blowback type of pistol caliber carbine, have you ever had something like this happen where you had a out of battery detonation of the primer and it blew the casing out and maybe damaged your gun? Is this just something that happens on guns like this? If so, well, I don't know. I'm a little bit concerned. Not too worried. As I said, I haven't had any other issues before. It just really surprised me and made me a little bit sad because honestly, this is one of my favorite pistol caliber carbines and one of my favorite guns of my collection. So I hate to have to send it back for a little bit, but uh, I think in the end, it's going to be a good thing. So I just wanted to document this. Let me know what you all think. Do you agree with my diagnosis? Could it be something else that I didn't even think about? I would love to know in the comments section below. And I love sharing these stories with you because we're just here to talk about guns. And I guess having a gun break on you is just part of the experience. And while it might frustrate you, it's just part of the journey and gives me something to work on and think about. So let me know what you think in the comments section below. And as always, thanks for watching.